Alright, I'm gonna join the call. Give me a sec. Hi. Hey, what are the four forces of flight? Weight, drag, and thrust. Are there any subcomponents of these four forces of flight? Subcomponents? Mm, not that I recall. We went over. Okay. Uh, drag. Your subcomponents are drag. You have induced drag and you have parasite drag. Induced drag and parasite drag. Okay. And we'll, this is one we're doing the lift off? Uh, well, you have four basic forces of flight. Mm -hmm. Lift, thrust, drag, and weight. Right. And so those are the four basic forces, but they're subcomponents or, you know, I guess smaller groups of drag that uh, comprise or, or that make up total drag. So okay. induced is one of them. Gotcha. All right. All right. <sighs> what makes an airplane turn? An airplane turn? Um... That's when you're using the, what you call that, the yoke to use the rudders and yeah, the... Yeah, you would, you would bank the aircraft, but I'm more concerned about a force. And if you can remember, if you don't remember, just say I don't remember and I'll go into it. But what is the force? There's a force that makes the airplane turn. If you don't remember, say, hey, I'll remember. Yeah, that I can't remember off the top of my head right now. It's the horizontal component of lift. Horizontal component of lift. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me put that in there. AKA a a centripetal force. Okay. So a centripetal force causes aircraft to turn. Mm -hmm. All right. What are the five major components of aircraft? Not ro or of airplanes. Five major components? Mm -hmm. There are five major components of an air airplane. Five major components. E. You have the... Um, I don't remember stated like this, but if I would have to remember all the stuff we went over, I'd have to say you have the internal combustion engine. You have the okay, let's, wings. Let's pause. With the uh -huh. well, I guess yeah, you could go there. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I guess you go there. Good, I'm listening. And you have the the wings with the I can't remember the thing that you've called behind just, it. Just say wings, don't even just just right. wings. And then you have the the rudders. That would on be the a back. major component. The rudder what is about the landing gear? Landing gear is another one. So we got wings, we got power plant, we got landing gear, two more. Um you have the engines. We said power plant. Oh, power plants is part of the engine. Okay. Um, what else? Those are the three main ones that I could remember off the top of my head. Okay. I'm, sure which one I'm missing. Fuselage. Fuselage. What is the, what is the function of the fuselage again? It's the major, like the center, like the... Like the center of the it plane, joins all, it's, it joins all the parts. The wings are attached to the fuselage. The landing gear are attached to the fuselage. The wings are attached. Did I say wings already? All right. Wings, yeah. landing gear, fuselage is also t t uh, attached to the empennage. The empennage, which is the tail section. Oh, that I don't remember hearing last week. Empennage. Mm -hmm. Empennage is the tail section. 
Mm -hmm. Which consists of the vertical and horizontal stabilizer. Recording. Yeah, so you said um, the empanage is part of the tail section. power plant mm -hmm. and then you said fuselage is what connects them all together mm -hmm. would you like me to send you a diagram of a, an airplane are you okay um sure no, every little bit helps ow you all right yeah if i don't kill myself over here <laughs> <laughs> Fuselage connect all the major parts all right, of the Pause aircraft. for a second. I need to talk to my computer. Sure. All right. Five major components of an airplane. Okay. So, uh, every aircraft, airplane, has to have these five major components in order to be called an airplane. All right. Okay. This is how we distinguish lighter than air aircraft from balloons, from rotary wing. You know, if you're going to be classified as an airplane, you're going to have wings. You're going to have a power plant or power plants. Landing gear wings and then panage and a fuselage. If you look, you see okay. that the fuselage joins all the major components. You see the wings attached to it. The landing gear, the power plant, uh, and the empennage as well. So, you know, five major components. Okay. Okay, what are the purpose of flaps? Purpose of flaps? Mm -hmm. um, that's to help you um, adjust your altitude? No, wing flaps. You ever go traveling? Yeah. All right. Do you know what wing flaps are? Aren't they the little... Um, Pieces that extend and move up and down behind the actual wings itself? Extend, yeah. Move, yeah. But how do you mean move? They move upward and downward. Okay, that, those would be ailerons. Those would be ailerons. Oh, that's and they're what I'm responsible missing. for rolling the aircraft. The flaps, however, do extend if we were looking at this aircraft from a side view and we were going flying in that direction. When you land, you might see, when you take off, you may see flaps extend a little bit. When you're landing, you may see your flaps extend a lot of bit, a little bit, a lot of bit. You may even also see a leading edge slap extend like this in that direction. So we get a really nice curve. Okay. Now, now what the heck does this curve do? What is that curve? Where we got that curve, man? We do a couple That's things. We, we increase lift and we increase drag. And we also okay. delay the stall speed. Okay. Okay. All right. A couple things. So all these things that we cover and like you like, okay, you know, I'll know that. Okay. You yeah. write, you, you take notes and you write them down. Right. What is ground effect? Ah, ground effect, that I remember. That's when you're within about a wingspan from the ground and you're not quite at the, what is it, the lift acceleration speed. And what, you're what starting is, hold to... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's the lift acceleration speed? <laughs> um, I never that... heard of that. <laughs> and you know I'm going to mess with you a little bit. I'm going to yank the right. chain a little bit. That's just me. I mean nothing well, that, by it. Lift that... acceleration speed? Yeah, the speed that you're supposed to have to get your proper lift off of the ground. Okay. Uh, okay. I like rotation speed. Do you call it? It's rotation. Okay. A rotation I speed. The terminology you need to take a, a take. You can call it a take. Well, I wouldn't say technically a takeoff speed. Because we start rolling, we apply the throttle, airspeed alive, yeah. instrument cross check, rotation. Rotation, right. we just raise the nose off the ground. And then we let the we let the wings 
uh, aerodynamically support the weight of the aircraft or take the weight all of the aircraft off of your landing gear and your wings are now responsible. So your wings are like, hey, I got this landing gear. I'm okay. going to support the weight of the aircraft now. The interference right. of the Earth's surface. The interference of the Earth's surface with the airflow patterns about around the wing. Or they say about the wing in some uh, schools. All right. When we get into ground effect, which you did mention was one wingspan above the ground is where we would more than likely experience this. Right. We actually lose induced drag. We have the same amount of lift, but we lose induced drag. Right. All right. And this is why we get a ballooning effect. Like the plane doesn't want to land. It's just kind of, it doesn't want to land. It just kind of just hangs, hangs, hangs. And then we have to pre-plan by maybe coming into the lower airspeed because the slower we are, the less lift we're generating. And so then we can uh, kind of eliminate that ground effect a little bit quicker. So it takes a little bit of planning and your instructor will teach you techniques, tips and techniques. All right. The other side of that coin is that you could become airborne before your recommended takeoff speed. Right. Every pilot operating handbook has a recommended takeoff speed. Okay. Like, okay, we're going to, your recommended takeoff speed is maybe like 65 knots, right? Mm -hmm. But on this really hot, humid day, all of a sudden, you're at 45, 50 knots, and the plane just goes, whoo. That's because right. it's generating tons of lift, and the induced drag is not there yet because you're within one wingspan. Of the runway, all right, and that earth is interfering with the airflow patterns around your wing. So then the ground effect kicks in, the plane pops up, and you're like, "Wow, I'm getting all this performance." But what you should do is just let the airspeed continue to build up. Don't try to climb out of the one wingspan height. You got to stay in it till you reach get enough airflow flowing over the wings in order that you may take off safely because when you get outside of one wingspan, that induced drag is going to come back and you could ab abruptly settle to the ground. So a lot of times when, um, when I was a flight, a full-time flight instructor, you really, really get this like in short field and soft field takeoffs. When you're, you really trying to minimize the amount of runway that you're using. So okay. as a result, the plane would just go whoop, like that, right? And then, you know, your student will be like, oh, yeah, man, you know, we took off, right? But you got to kind of put your hand on the yoke to guard them from pulling back even for, more to climb out. They right. got to, you have to level off over the runway and then you do your climb out. Okay. All right. So, taking off and landing. And that level off. Is for is for you to build up to the proper speed, then you climb. Yes, out. yes, and then you can climb out, because the amount of lift that your wings are generating is predicated upon your speed. Right. All right. If you don't have the airspeed, yeah. you're not going to generate the lift, so you don't want to come out of ground effect, and then that induced drag comes back, and your wings are like, we don't have enough speed, man, and okay. boom, <laughs> you know. That would be a bad day, but don't let that freak you out. Your instructor is always going to show you techniques like, okay, look, boom, we're in ground effect, level out over the runway, and just build the airspeed like you just mentioned, and then you can climb out. Gotcha. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Tell me about the lambs, Clydes. <laughs> I said, it's a crazy movie. Silence of the Lambs, like, tell me about the lambs, Gladys. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about the ground effect, girl, though. <laughs> it's one of those things, man. Okay. Um, tell me about fuel. Fuel, fuel, fuel. fuel. What are some weird things you know about fuel? What is, what... What what is fuel really used for? 
in engines? What is the function? What is the purpose? Why we need gas, man? Um, aviation fuel. We power the engine and actually. I must be hungry. I could have sworn I heard you say. Yeah, eat. man. You want to eat, <laughs> man? Um. All right. Let's talk about uh, what is required as far as pre-flighting in aircraft. What's required? What do we have to do? Mm. So that's before you even start your engine? Yeah, man. You got to look at the plane, right? Right. So you got to do your walk around. Make sure the wings are attached. Yeah. You at least at minimum have to do a walk around inspection. That's the minimum. Walk around inspection. Well, I don't want to. I hate hate speaking to absolute, so I won't say that's the minimum. All right. You're required to do a walk, walk around inspection. But I recommend maybe like if you're going to be flying that plane all day, you know, in the, in the beginning of the day before you fly, you know, do a thorough checklist, checklist inspection. Um, right. Because it is a logical order that the manufacturers come up to check all the items associated with that aircraft for aircraft safety. One of them would be okay. checking your fuel to make sure you have enough fuel to make sure there is enough right. oil that the oil level is high enough so you can have the proper temperatures and pressure, engine pressures and oil uh, engines and pressures and stuff and things of that nature. So, um, you know, that checklist is good. And so we can't, as humans, we forget things, don't we? Right. So we don't want to forget. So the pilot's checklist, the main two things that I know that I can see the pilots do while I'm at work is the walk around and they're checking the instruments along with the fuel levels and weight and balance. Yeah, all the important Towards stuff. The, right. So even your walk around inspection, there's going to be items in that detailed checklist that they check. They're like the super important. Got to have fuel. Right. Don't want to fall out of the sky. Oil. Exactly. Got to have engine proper engine oil levels because we don't want our, our engine burning up on us. Right. Because what is the purpose of oil? Lubricating oil. That's to lubricate the systems? Yeah, so because you're going to have parts rubbing together. So that oil is in there to minimize the friction. So I rub my hands together like this, they're getting warmer. But if I had some lotion or coconut oil, that's what I use, coconut oil. Um, Then it minimizes the friction and it minimizes the heat generated by the friction. Gotcha. Makes sense. Okay. What causes a stall? A stall. That I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? No. <laughs> that, we all right. What causes a stall? Uh, the only other thing I could think of is like air that you run into, like certain kind of clouds or no certain kind of clouds. I like how you said air, but. Uh, I felt like you were going in the right direction, but then you made a right turn on me when you started talking about clouds. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, left, left. You're like, no, nah, man, we're going right, Kino. Shut up. Sit down. Put your seat <laughs> Um, All right. Our airfoil. An airfoil, any device used to produce lift. Um, airflow has to be flowing over the wing in order to produce lift. I call it laminar airflow because the air molecules are super, super tight or close to the wing, like a laminated document. All right. Uh, I was trying to find something laminated. Okay. Don't worry about it. I should have something on my desk. Nothing's laminated, Kino. (laughs) All right. Find something laminated next time. Right. No, that's not gonna work. All right. Um, a lift occurs when we exceed the critical angle of attack. But before that, what is angle of attack? Angle of attack. 
the angle in which 